We all know that Linus is doing videos on the operating system created by Linus, and the community has responded like a protective Linus. I'm not sure if they think he's Linus, or maybe he's crossed whatever they think the line is. The point is, I've exhausted my homonyms, and Linus and Luke just published their second part of the Linux challenge, and it's amazing that a video that is exclusively about playing video games on Linux is trending. I think it goes to show that this is the kick in the butt that Linux gaming needed, and that Linus is the right person to deliver it. I'm going to tell you why in this video. So part two of the Linux challenge comes two weeks after part one. The goal of part one was to install Linux and get a single game running. The goal of part two was to set up game streaming complete with team communications and a camera setup. Both hosts in both videos had their fair share of challenges, but in this episode, they ran into issues where peripherals and software weren't as fully as functional as they were in Windows due to missing software and or drivers. OBS was missing the NVEC encoder. Luke had an audio issue that was making his voice deeper. My voice just feels deeper now. There was companion software to tune headsets and keyboards that were just completely unavailable outside of Windows. And this is unrelated, but Linus also made like the weirdest font choice. Hey Linus, I got a question. What are those? Jokes aside, what I'm getting at is that they've been relentless about letting us viewers know what their challenges are. I think most people, including the Linux community itself, have been responsive to this, but there are certainly still people that are being extremely protective and making it seem like the problem is actually Linus himself. I think they're kind of missing the point. Linus is not being brutally honest, he's being radically candid. The distinction between the two is that he personally cares about this effort and personally wants to see it succeed. Not just that, but his years of experience make him an expert at playing this role. Let me explain. Ever since LTT started talking about the Linux challenge, I too have been slowly trying to make Linux a daily driver. I say slowly because I don't think I have the bandwidth to go all in the way that Luke and Linus have. In this endeavor, I've hit speed bumps of my own. As an IT professional, I haven't encountered anything that I can't get past, but my years of being an IT professional have also encouraged me to gloss over these issues to some extent, to unconsciously smooth over the rough edges and forget what it's like to be a real user. In some ways, the LTT team members are in a similar boat, but Linus in particular is not just a power user. He's also been doing product reviews for over a decade and since then has been developing his own products. He's able to put himself in the shoes of a customer and strive for quality. The level of quality that he expects from himself is the level of quality he expects from his products, which is the same level of quality he expects from efforts that he truly cares about. Because of this, LTT is doing a great job of covering a significant breadth of use cases. Even the way they've structured the challenge itself is indicative of this. The challenge may have been inspired by the Steam Deck, but it's not about the Steam Deck. It's about experiencing Linux as someone who plays games. That includes gaming from Steam, but also gaming from other launchers. It includes streaming, it includes hardware designed for gamers and streamers, it includes Discord and other gamer related software. A lot of people will come into the LTT comments and dismiss any one of these. They'll act like playing non-Steam games is not a factor, completely disregarding some of the most played games in the world. They'll say Linus's hardware is exotic, when the whole point is that everyone on PC has unique hardware. The most common GPU on Steam is a GeForce GTX 1060. You want to know how many people use the most common GPU? Approximately 8% of the Steam user base. That's nothing. And there are many fewer GPUs to choose from than mice, headsets, keyboards, and sound systems. Everyone's build is exotic. Linus's is only expensive, not particularly exotic. The PC user base is far more fragmented than consoles. Linux only further complicates matters. There are distros to choose from, desktop environments to choose from, not to mention all the ways you can install applications. Do you know that there are at least four ways to install OBS on Manjaro? According to openforeveryone.net, you can install via the package manager, either from the GUI or command line, or you can use a snap store, or you can install the flat pack, or you can use one of at least seven available packages on the AUR repository. That's nuts. One of the things Linus is addressing in this series is the inherent fragmentation. And here's the other thing. People will listen to all of Linus's notes. 
Like, I mean everybody. Virtually everybody will listen. Users will listen because he's funny and charismatic. The community will listen because he's generally knowledgeable and he cares. The corporations will listen because everyone else will listen. It was almost a year ago when another techie YouTube channel, Hardware Unbox, had been unceremoniously blocked from receiving pre-release hardware from NVIDIA. Everybody chimed in and threw their support at Hardware Unbox. This included Linus who appeared to be pivotal in getting the access restored. In fact, distro developers wanted to guide LTT through this challenge. That's because they could see this coming. I don't mean they could foresee the speed bumps per se, just that they wanted to provide the smoothest experience possible because they know the reach that LTT has. This is the sort of reach and power that sparks change. I mean, that's pretty self-evident at this point. With two videos in, he's already sparked major change. After Linus mistakenly wiped his desktop environment in part one, both the package manager, Apt, and the software manager, KDE Discover, received updates that would prevent this from ever happening so swiftly. The blog post for the latter even said, quote, hopefully this is Linus Sebastian proof, end quote. Is that phrase going to become a thing? Will Linux contributors around the world strive to be Linus Sebastian proof? Is this the Linus effect? I'm inclined to think so. This level of change is deeply needed. The Linux contributors are great and they will listen to this feedback and incorporate it. I'm sure of that. But they're not the only ones that need this level of radical candor. So too do the corporations. Linus called out both Nvidia and TC Helicon in this latest video. By virtue of calling out the poor experience of non-Steam launchers in part one, he's calling out these other game launchers like Ubisoft. By highlighting these issues, he's putting a spotlight on the corporations that are responsible for stifling Linux progress. The community can't do it alone. We need corporations like Logitech, Nvidia, and TC Helicon to participate in the progress as Valve, Intel, and AMD have. Linus is doing his part. He's holding the corporation's feet to the fire. He's exposing the downside of fragmentation, and he's doing a level of quality control that he does not have to do for his content. And we're all busy complaining that he's not consistent with whether or not to use the command line? As if real users are consistent. We're complaining that he didn't read. As if users would read a wall of text. We're saying he's incredibly stubborn and confident. As if users aren't stubborn and confident. To go mainstream is to somehow placate stubborn, unreasonable, and sometimes nonsensical avatars. That is how Linux gaming goes mainstream. Assuming we still want that. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, do hit the like button. Obviously it's Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, y'all. So this is going to replace my Friday video. But I'll be back on Monday. And while you're here, go watch my gift guide video. It's probably my best video that most of you haven't seen. I had to take it down briefly, so it didn't make it to all of your feeds properly, but I think I did an awesome job of highlighting interesting things to treat yourself or someone else with. Also, I've got a hack and deck ready, and I'm going to do some testing on it. I'm taking requests over on my Patreon, so if you want to pledge your support, you too can suggest some games to try. And if you made it this far, you are a real one, and you may have heard this before. Like and subscribe, slap the bell to get notified, tell a friend it's a vibe, deck gang out. Goodbye.